We were in this building when the storm hit. It rode it like a champ. In fact, we came out the morning after the storm and thought, well, that was, that was too bad for the Texas Live Oaks on the street. And we could see some damage on rooftops, but we thought, well, we rode that pretty well. And it wasn't till uh, Tuesday that we realized what was going on. There was really no information. We figured the best thing to do is get everybody we could find together and, um, and ask them how they felt about what was going on. What was open? What were they doing? What were their plans? Our message to the nation is that we, the citizens of Louisiana, will do all that we can do to see that our citizens all have a voice. It's a standing room only event. And we just added a cocktail waitress last week, which is very New Orleans, that you would have a, a political forum with a cocktail waitress. It's the oldest established floating crap game in, in uh, New Orleans. This is the longest running and best established uh, uh, community gathering that this town has had in a long time. It's history in the making. Right now, as things begin to start up again and, uh, and New Orleans getting rebuilt, it's starting right here. It's so inspiring to me to see citizens coming together and trying to solve the problems in their communities. We're in carnival season now. Twelfth night, which was the 6th of January, was Twelfth Night. And uh, the twelfth day of Christmas from the partridges and the pear tree, and, and that starts carnival. So Carnival uh, runs from now till February 28th, Tuesday, which is Fat Tuesday, which is Mardi Gras. And then we have Lent and then Easter. And we, they have a list outside the church. You can, you can see it all. Um, so we are in, uh, we're in Carnival season. And so king cake is traditional. It's a big cake that doesn't taste very good. But you, you, in your slice, there's a chance that you have this little baby, little plastic baby. And if you don't swallow it, if you don't choke on it, you get a prize for having, and it, it, you are the king of that particular event. You get to host the rest of the evening. So tonight, Jimmy, rather than having king cake, he has levy cake. And the, it's who finds the breach in the cake. Four months after the storm, you're on the 12th night, beginning of carnival season. I don't know, living in the city, it's, it's, it's a strange dichotomy. Uh, right here where we are in, in you know, sunny uptown, Audubon Park, you can uh, live your life oblivious of what's happened here to a large degree. Uh, you talk about politics aside, I mean, if, if you read the paper and you see the blue tarps on the roof, then, then you see it. But uh, you know, somehow we've managed to uh, to maintain a uh, a viable and working and functioning community up here. It has restaurants and bars and churches and playgrounds and schools and a park. Um, some functioning traffic lights, some mail service, not much. Uh, but uh, you know, when you cross into that line where the brown stain begins, where the bathtub ring surrounds our city. Uh, it's a whole other thing. It hits you in the face. And it, it's funny, a lot of people stay on the, the island, or what do they call it, the sliver on the river. I like to think of it as Bermuda. It's the same size as Bermuda, seven miles long, and one mile wide. It just doesn't have the good golf courses. Well, I say to people from out of town a lot, because they'll call and say, well, how's it going today? How's it going today? People who care. And I said, you know, where I live, I live downtown, I walk downtown, I work downtown, I have appointments uptown. Little raggedy on the edges, little piles of stuff, but they're, we're pretty much back to normal. But you go beyond those perimeters, and to me, it is sinful that more has not been done. More has not been done. I want to call the military back and say, would you just help us clean a little bit longer? I mean, God bless what <coughs> these people did, but please help us one more time, one more sweep. The pain and frustration in people's voices who are still 
indecisive about what do I do, what do I do, where is the direction? That to me would make me more nuts than the loss of a home, is not knowing what to do. Yeah, and, and to me, you know, I equate it with what I probably uh, impressed with most and what I remember most, it's war. It is it's war. war. It is war. The, the uptown area is your base. It's behind the lines. It's the safe part where you can go to, and it feels pretty much like you're not in war. If you go out of that perimeter and you go much past a certain click, it, it's, it's kind of bothersome. It's a little concerned. If you go way past that safe area, it's war. It's a destroyed Nagasaki. Mm. And when you look at it, you think, okay, it's very good over here. It's kind of good right here. But how good is that going to be if this never changes? Day-to-day -day swings, and, and you probably find this with everybody. Uh, you know, today, optimistic, blue sky. It's nice here, it's beautiful. Tomorrow, could be dark and gloomy. Uh, the waves of optimism and pessimism just hit you with a, with a fury, uh, you know, not to make too maudlin a uh, comparison, but the fury of a hurricane, you know. There was really no information. Um, so you kind of had to see wet people to understand what was going on. We sat through Rita and then, and then things dried out and about a month after that they picked up the trash and took the porta potties away. And it's only been uphill from there. I guess I just had never been through anything like this so I couldn't have possibly imagined what it would be like. And in my head I kept thinking I gotta get back and I gotta help it come back and get back to normal. We were in a closet, yeah. literally in a closet, saying this is the first time America either doesn't care about or has the incapacity to take care of its own and get calls from foreign countries saying we're listening to you say this, we agree and we're going to help and we just came off of the tsunami where we yes. moved two aircraft carriers and a hospital ship within three days and five days later we have no help I, I, I gotta tell you in all my history in broadcasting I think that moment was I was just stunningly angry oh, Jeff, I closer walk with me when I tell you there was not another human being nor car I got this overwhelming feeling of, oh my God, it's dead. And then I saw the sign that hopefully many people saw. And you know how in New Orleans you can hear it? On this handwritten sign was, get out a broom and clean the gutter so the water will go in. And I said, oh no, life. There is such life here. I drove down that street, I kept looking, still no human beings. I said, there is life in this place, there will be life in this place. And I felt that every time I came back, there is life. <laughs> ambassador for the uh, city of New Orleans, I really feel that uh, music is one piece of what's going to heal the city. You know, we have to have a, uh, a multifaceted approach and a multifaceted uh, concept, big dream for what this city needs. I think right now the city is dreaming too small. I think we need to get on big dreams. Now what happens is we start dreaming big and then the rest of the country says, oh man, don't do that. We as a city need to stick together and do what we know how to do. We have big dreams. That doesn't mean a lot of a dream. That means big ideas. And that's what Louis Armstrong did. That was a man who was from a small neighborhood, who came from small upbringing, came from uh, not very much money, very common upbringing. But look what he became. That's the American story. And our rebuilding has to use our culture as a tool, because the culture is the boat that's going to get us across that river to where we need to go. We have created the 
greatest art form that America has ever produced, which is jazz. It is the uh, reality of New Orleans. And I think that uh, pretty much that sensibility of, of what we need to rebuild has to come from, you know, our culture. And the second line comes out something so serious from our jazz procession, which is our jazz funeral. So that celebration comes out something that is so ceremonial, it's something so serious, but we're serious about mourning and we're serious about celebrating. And both of those things are necessary. And the second line is one piece of that, and that's a true moment that we define ourselves as New Orleanians. It's a moment in time of celebration. You see the second line, you got white people, black people, Asian people, you might have some people in town from Japan, they join in. It's a celebratory thing because jazz is a celebratory music. That's why when America created this art family, it was born here in New Orleans, it was so significant because it took that true American uh, element that we use, that tool that we have to use in rebuilding. You know what that's called? Optimism. Optimism of the blues. And the second line has that in it. You know, we play uh, instruments like other people hold basketballs in their neighborhoods. I mean, that's, that's the greatness of uh, New Orleans legacy. You know, as I, I drove up and I looked at the statue of Louis Armstrong, someone asked me a question and said, what has all this taught us? And when I came and I looked at Louis Armstrong and I thought to myself, um, here's someone who's been such a great representative for what our city can be, a great representative for what our country can be, and truly, not only what a great New Orleanian is, but what a great American can be. And I think the big story here is really, you know, New Orleans, Right now, we're in the moment for really defining what the possibilities of being an American city and being an American citizen can be. To rebuild the city of New Orleans is to give back point, point, point zero, 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 five percent of what this city has given me as being a musician, as a jazz musician, as an African American, as being bar none an American here. And when I think of Louis Armstrong, I think what he would want us to do, I think he would want us to use what we have, our resources, as a celebratory tool to rebuild. Because what we do in America is we rebuild, but we rebuild with celebration.